In this video, I want to share how I solved some problems printing this very simple bottle opener. It looks simple and straightforward. It's not overly complex. It's not overly detailed. But I encountered two main problems. Number one, deformation. And number two, warping and twisting. And uh, I solved those by running a number of tests. <laughs> I'm going to walk through all of these tests fairly informally. I've got my checklist here, which I need to refer to. And then we're going to get to the solution fairly quickly so that you can achieve better prints on what I'm calling a flat curve as opposed to a spherical curve and a print where the detail that you're looking for is in fact no detail, as in just really nice, smooth, flat surfaces. So let's begin. Number one, test number one. Okay, so I oriented the model at two different angles uh, hanging from the build plate, thinking that that was the conventional wisdom. And generally speaking, it is. But in this particular orientation, you can see that immediately I got this deformation problem, the dent in the top there. And looking across the print, there wasn't a lot of warping or cupping going across that flat surface, but this dent here was completely unacceptable. So no good for that one. Then I thought, okay, well, I'll go for vertical number two, and I'll also offset it slightly on an angle. Surely that'll fix it. Well, no, in fact, the deformation, the dent is actually still there and you can see it just there. And uh, the curve here is reasonably okay, but this deformation is no good at all. So then I thought, okay, number three, let's print this instead of going vertical, let's go horizontal and I'll align it at 45 degrees. Now this was actually better but you'll see here that I did actually start to get some sagging issues by not having enough supports on the model. And I thought, well, maybe I'm close there. But then when I looked across the, the flatness of this curve, if I can put it that way, I noticed that the flatness actually wasn't that flat. And in fact, what was happening was I was actually getting some cupping or some twisting in the model going this way. And I thought, okay, so 45 doesn't work. Number four, this is where I actually decided to go back to vertical because maybe I didn't do it right the first time. Well, that didn't work either. And then I thought, well, for number five, I'll try vertical, but then I'll slightly offset that at another five degrees. Well, you can see here that I'm starting to get these problems again, these, these defects here going across this surface. And that started to really frustrate me. And then on the inside, I also started to get them here. And then I also noticed that I had this ridge that started to appear under this lip which was really difficult to get rid of. So that didn't work either. So on to number six. That's where I started to get a little bit more success. So I stayed with the horizontal alignment and then I inclined it five degrees in one direction and then 10 degrees in this direction. Now, again, the problem was that I didn't have enough supports on the model. So I started to get these sag marks, but overall the print started to improve. And I thought, okay, so horizontal is going to be better than vertical. And when I say horizontal, I don't mean completely horizontal. I mean, generally horizontal with a bit of an angle. So number seven, this is where I actually inclined it in the X direction, 15 degrees, and then five degrees in the Y direction. There isn't as much sagging going along this axis here. And that's because I massively increased the supports to actually go all the way around that edge, but there were no supports on this top edge. Then when I looked across this flat surface, across this flat surface here, I then started to notice that there was bending and warping. So it was all okay here, but not in this direction. I didn't realize at that point how close I actually was. So then I actually started to go off track. So then I ran a few more tests and I'm gonna call these tests collectively eight, nine, 10, and 11. And uh, these all didn't work and that's because I actually went back to vertical and I thought, well, maybe it's dependent on whether it's vertical this way or vertical that way. Well, as it turns out, there is a minor difference, but neither of those work. And then I thought maybe it's because the model is under supported. So you can see here on test nine that I really did ramp up the supports. And unfortunately that made no difference whatsoever. <laughs> Number 10 also didn't work. Neither did number 11. So tests eight, nine, 10 and 11, well, they didn't work. So then for test 12, I thought maybe it's the resin. So I'm gonna call these ones here group 12. So in my group 12 tests, I thought maybe it's the resin that I'm using that wasn't actually coping with the curve. Maybe I need to use something more like an engineering resin. Well, this is Amerilabs XVN50. 
It's a really, really high quality uh, engineering resin. And one of the key features that is advertised about that resin is its ability to print straight edges and nice flat surfaces. Now, these are curves, but the straightness that I was looking for was along that axis. Well, none of those worked using the methods that I had already been using. So then I thought, well, surely if the curve starts over here and then only goes in the one direction coming up and over that slope, as opposed to something like that, where it has to go out and then back and over, surely that'll fix it. No, it didn't fix it and it was terrible. So then I thought, well, where did I actually have success? Well, I started to get success pretty early on when I started with test three in the 45 degree orientation. It's just that back then I didn't know it. So I thought, well, what if I go back there and this time what I'll do is I'll orient the model horizontally, generally speaking, and then up five degrees and then out five degrees. Let's just start with five and five. Well, that gave me this result here. And you can see that I actually haven't removed the support marks from this one. You can see that they're all still there. But with this one, I also then increased the supports across the other side. So as it was tilted this way, I then also ran supports from this end all the way over to the other end. That actually made an enormous difference. This is actually flat going this way and there's no deformation down this end. I was really pleased to see that I'd solved a couple of problems, except for the fact that I'd created a new problem. There's now a surface blemish on this side here, and I have a feeling that's because of the way that the model was angled in that direction. And that was frustrating because I was so close. So then I thought, what if I stay with this horizontal orientation, I'll angle it up five degrees that way, and instead of going five degrees in that direction, what if I was just to pull it back instead of going five to just three. So in this case, a difference of two degrees. Well, then when this one came out of the printer, have a look at that. It's very different. There's virtually no surface blemishing across this curved flat surface, and the inside prints beautifully. This internal surface looks beautiful. There's no line coming across this edge, which was a problem I had with the other prints, and it looks really good. There's no bending or cupping across that flat surface there, everything's looking pretty good. Except for the fact that you can see some minor sagging just here. So this surface on that side where the supports were is not as flat as that side, and that's to be expected. And then I thought, well, maybe it's a different resin again. Now this resin here is Amerilab's TGM7. So then I went back to the Amerilabs XVN50 using the same supports and found that the difference was better again. Not massively different, but big enough to notice. And you'll see here, this was the side which was supported. It's a bit harder to see with black on a black background. And then I also had a full line of supports going across this edge here. This surface here is absolutely beautiful. There's no surface blemishing there at all. I was very pleased with that outcome. And then the inside is also beautiful. And then this surface here where I had sagging on the other two is actually really clean. And if I hold those two up next to each other, here you go, there's the, the blue one is the Amerilabs TGM7 and the black one is the Amerilabs XVN50. You can see how the XVN50 really does have a much flatter surface. And these two models were supported in exactly the same way. So then you're probably wondering, okay, so you found the right orientation. You went to the Amerilabs TGM7, which is this blue one. You had a better result. Then you went to the Amerilabs XVN50, where you had an even better result. But what about that other resin that you started with? Can you get the same result using that model orientation? Well, here's one that I printed with that model orientation. Five degrees this way and three degrees this way. And guess what? The result is very, very good. No surface blemishes on this curve, or maybe just very, very slightly, but enough to be okay. And then the inside surface is also very good. You can see there that there are no blemishes there. There's no uh, line going across this edge. There are no artifacts or anything to be concerned about there. This top side printed beautifully flat. But what about this side under here? Well, when I compare it to the TGM7, I think you can see a slight difference in favor of the TGM7. I think you can. Now, I'm not saying that this gray one, and I'll reveal which one that is in a moment, I'm not saying that this original gray one is a bad resin. 
I just think that you can see a noticeable difference with the TGM7, and you can definitely see it with the XVN50. You can definitely see that. Which resin is this? Well, this is Anycubic DLP Craftsman resin. It's a really good resin which I use for testing a lot of different products. So I finally solved it by changing the alignment in one direction by just two degrees. But what about accuracy? This is the bottle opener that I actually modeled this from. Uh, this is one that I had lying around in my kitchen top drawer. It's quite a nice design actually. I think it's quite practical, it's very simple, and it's one that I use quite frequently. And you can see by putting them next to each other that the approximation is pretty close. Now of course that's going to depend on how accurately I was able to measure the original one and then reproduce it in my modeling app, which is Shaper 3D. But there are two dimensions which I know, and I can use those to check the general accuracy. I'm only going to use two. I could measure absolutely everything, but I think two is enough. I know from the original model that the width is 20 millimeters. And if I take my vernier calipers and place them across the model like that, you can see that the measurement is in fact right on 20 millimeters. Something that might prove a bit more tricky for an accuracy measurement is this gap across these two edges here. Now I know from Shaper 3D that the gap here is actually 13.41. And if I place the vernier calipers across here, this might be a little bit difficult for you to see because they are manual verniers, but the measurement is in fact 13.4 and a tiny little bit. So the build plate orientation when it was being printed has obviously also contributed to that accuracy. Now there are three key things that I learned from this. Number one, printing smooth curves or smooth geometric shapes where the detail that you're looking for is no detail, in fact, you just want a nice, flat, smooth surface, is always going to be challenging. Number two, the build plate orientation is critical. Well, yeah, that's obvious, we know that. But what you can see is that sometimes, depending on the shape, it actually takes a number of tests to get it right. And sometimes you actually need to put in all of those tests before you go into production if you're going to produce a lot of these. And the third thing is resin choice makes a difference. But you can't fully appreciate that unless you've tried a number of different resins on the same model, one after the other, and then looked at them really closely. And you might think, well, I don't want to go out and buy three or four or maybe five resins to test that. Well, I understand that, and that's going to be tricky. Fortunately, I'm in a position where I've got a few different resins and I was able to test that. The differences are small, but they're enough to be noticeable and make a difference. So that's quite a lot of testing, and I'm really glad that I found a solution because the end result really does look very, very good. So if you got value out of that, it'd be great if you could like, comment, and consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching to the end, and uh, thank you so much for watching through all of those tests, and we'll see you next time.